Welcome to episode 199 of In Touch with iOS, the show that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, and Jeff Gavin is back on the show. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great, and uh, I, I am seriously happy to be here. And I'm happy to have you be here. And uh, we have another guest returning to the show. So glad he's back. Andrew Orr. How are you doing, Andrew? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm doing good this week. Well, that's good. I'm glad glad to hear that. And uh, <laughs> we, we got a lot of good stuff to talk about this week. I just found some uh, good good stories of going on. And then we're going to touch a little bit about uh, the new iMovie app that came out and Tim Cook talking to the, the Global Summit and you know, all that other fun stuff here. So let's just drive right into the news for this week. Um, one of my favorite apps, 1Password, uh, is 1Password 8 Beta is now available on the iPhone and the iPad with a new design, rebuilt core, and more. Uh, I, I, 1Password 8 is now available as a public beta for iPhone and iPad and brings a number of major changes to the popular password manager. Uh, the update comes as at, as 1Password uh, 8 is debuting, had, had debuted for the Mac last year with a controversial transition to the cross-platform electro- Electron Core. Uh, but it's bringing back an all-new design, new features, customizations, and all that fun stuff. Uh, Jeff, you're a one password user as, as, as I am. And I, I mm-hmm. assume you are as well, Andrew, but, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I started playing with it a little bit an eight on the Mac and, and I haven't dabbled into it yet for the iPhone, but, uh, what do you think of this? Is this going to be a big problem? You know, we, we love the fact that one password was just for us Mac and Apple users, but not anymore. Well, okay. So the iOS and iPadOS versions are still native apps. They're native. Right. Um, and, and I'm calling that out because I'm assuming a lot of people are concerned that <laughs> that version eight is Electron uh, for everything. Right. But that's not the case. That's true. Uh, moving to Electron on the Mac, I, I get it. It's... Yeah there's a bigger market out there that they need to address Mm -hmm. and that market includes windows. And if they're going to have a platform where they can truly uh, uh, support both Mac and windows, they need to have this set up in a, in a way where it's actually easy to do that. And so while I'd rather have it native on the Mac I get why it's Electron. I have not been playing with the betas though, because yeah. this scares is, me. This is one place <laughs> where I I know people that that are living in the betas mm. for one password, and it's fine. Yeah, but you know, I'll do all kinds of beta stuff, but my password database, I am kind of conservative about that. Yeah, me, mm-hmm. too. me too. I think it's also going to include Chrome OS. I believe they they expanded in Electron, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's not just Windows, Linux, of course, and so they're they're going to mm-hmm. be they're they're going all out on platforms as far as on the desktop, and, side. and that's smart. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're going to go for the uh, the big players, you know, so that means you're going for companies, you're going for enterprise level stuff then uh, you need to be looking at more than Mac and Windows at this point because there are a lot of other devices in uh, a lot of other environments where you just you want to cover it all. Absolutely. Andrew, are you, you use 1Password? Um, I did in the past. I don't anymore. Okay. But I read the article, and I think the new design looks great. It looks very native Apple UI design, Mm -hmm. like it fits 100% into the system. And um, I have heard negative things in the past about, you know, one password going to the Electron app on macOS, but sounds like they're still doing good so far from my perspective. Yeah. I I think for, for, uh, for iOS, you'll be fine. No one, no one has to worry. So, um, Mm -hmm. Well, on the next story here, uh, Apple's app tracking transparency crackdown estimated to cost 
lowly old Facebook another thirteen billion dollars in two thousand twenty-two, uh, almost a year after uh, uh, Apple released iOS fourteen point five, alongside the ability to unlock the iPhone with an Apple Watch while wearing a mask and new emojis. The company also brought that controversial app tracking transparency feature to life. Twelve months after, a new report now indicates that uh, how ATT can could impact uh, revenue for Facebook, Twitter, Snap, and YouTube in twenty twenty-two. Uh, according to a report, uh, big tech platforms re- re- reference could drop by almost $16 billion due to Apple's app tracking transparency. Uh, of course, you don't, you don't remember it. It, uh, it does have to ask you, you have, it's asking you permission to allow, uh, across the other apps and websites. I, I don't know if I have much sympathy for Facebook. Uh, what do you think, Andrew? I, I sure don't. Yeah. Um, I thought this was interesting because I saw a headline go go by earlier today where it sounded like someone from Apple was calling Facebook or Meta a hypocrite mm-hmm. because that would be Tim Cook. Tim Cook. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like Meta plans to charge users or developers fifty percent mm-hmm. for you know its transactions and. I thought it was interesting because I was asking myself, is this a reaction to this money that ATT is costing them or is it was that their plan all along? So I was trying to, you know, wrestle with that. Yeah, I, I think but, it was their plan all along because the amount of money that they will get by doing the 50 percent cut. I don't think we're looking at what 13 billion I don't think we're looking at that kind of money. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. Andrew, I am with you. I do not have sympathy for mm. Facebook over this. And, I mean, they, they made a very conscious decision to exploit their users in a way that, uh, that I feel is some, somewhat unethical because they're, they're using just these questionable methods in some cases to to really mine as much data out of their users as they possibly can. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then of course their, their revenue model is advertising, right. even though they do have other things that, that you as a Facebook user can pay for, you know, like if your business is and, and stuff, and, but ultimately it's ads. So yeah. if their whole ad model is based on, on horrendous exploitation of their users, well, as they say, karma's a bitch. <laughs> it sure yeah. is. It sure is. Um, uh, next couple stories here about Apple TV. Uh, actually, no. Let's let, we'll we'll actually start here with uh, uh, about the shot on iPhone uh, challenge and how the company views uh, photography. Uh, this was an Apple Insider. Uh, Apple says that the macro shot on iPhone challenge is evidence that the true potential of our products is fully realized when you, when users get a hold of them. And they announced the 10 winners of the shot on iPhone challenge on Wednesday, shortly after YouTuber and photographer Tyler Stallman uh, sat down with Apple VP of, of iPhone marketing, uh, can, uh, Dranson to discuss the uh, challenge and the winners. Uh, that's at a link in the, in the show notes here with the video, but, uh, yeah, this, there's some pretty amazing photos and the macro uh, mm-hmm. capability on the mm-hmm. iPhone 13 Pro is just absolutely phenomenal. I know, Jeff, you've been playing a lot with uh, macro. I have as well. Uh, what do you think? I think this is great to see Apple's really uh, showcasing this. Oh, uh, yeah, it's it's awesome. And uh, I, I think it's a great way for people to see that you don't have to go out and buy a high-end DSLR no, to won't. take really good photos. For me, my my sole camera for several years now has been an iPhone, and uh, yeah, I, th- I think I completely made the transition away from a separate digital camera with uh, with iPhone Seven. Yeah, and yeah, it's. I mean, I still I still have my DSLR sitting in my closet closet over here, and um, it's 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 I mean it's inside its case, so it isn't collecting dust, but it's. It, is, mm-hmm. it has been collecting dust, and I had to take the battery out of it just to make sure it doesn't get corroded or oh, something. Right. Uh, yeah, but you know, yep. I mean, I believe me, I, I'm I'm a big Nikon fan. I always have been, and uh, I think they got they got the glass on the on the Nikons are just, the the Nikkor lenses are just phenomenal. Um, mm-hmm. But but 
you know, you just get so tired of lugging around all that extra heavy equipment these days. And the iPhone 13 Pro is going to just going to be a great thing. Um, have you have you tried the, any type of photography with that, Android? Your your iPhone. So uh, yeah, Macro is. I've always. I feel like that's been the main uh, genre I've been interested in. And macro is also kind of the feat. It was like one of the main features that kind of nudged me to getting the 13 pro. Yeah. I think it's great. It's, it's really phenomenal because when I had my um, iPhone seven plus, for example, uh, to do my macro, I got this external lens from all right. clip that you could just clip onto it. I loved those uh, lenses. Yeah. Those lenses were great. Yeah. But I was thinking about this news and I, th- I was questioning whether this would still like, this is great for, you know, regular users, amateur photographers, but I think the professionals are still going to use the setups they already have mm-hmm. because oh, sure. I know um, uh, to my knowledge, there is this uh, specific technique in macro photography called focus stacking where it's, it's with a DSLR, for example, where you um, you take a whole bunch of different pictures of a subject, kind of like um, uh, burst mode at each like a whole bunch of different focal lengths so that the entire subject will be in focus. And I don't think um, macro mode on the iPhone 13 does that. Or maybe if you just take a regular picture with the DSLR, one plane of focus will be there and then some others will be blurred out in the background. For focus stacking, you need special software. And so I think... Well, I think this is great. Like I said, for the rest of us, I think those pros are still going to probably keep with their setup. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, professional photographers, yeah, and especially like wedding photographers and, and photographers who really need to have the good quality glass and their lenses and, and, and they have the comfort already with DSLRs. Yeah, I just don't see it being something that that they're going to convert to. But then again, Apple's worked with a lot of uh, they've seen uh, and they've in their advertising and talked to people like in the movie industry. It's, you know, some some directors have filmed with just the iPhone as as their primary means of a of a, of a camera, and it's been a just a phenomenal uh, result because of it. I mean, just uh, just with all the new special effects in, in the 13 Pro. Uh, alone. Yeah. I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm personally still very optimistic. I think Apple can do a whole lot more with Mm -hmm. their cameras. Yep. I think photography is here to stay for the iPhone and it'll it'll continue beyond that. That that is for sure. Yeah. Well, um, we, I think we really are well into the, into the phase of Mm -hmm. the primary feature of a smartphone is the camera. And, uh, and so at this point, you're buying cameras that have all these other communication technology things built into them. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, next couple stories here will be about Apple TV Plus. There's always just so many, there's so much going on with Apple TV Plus lately. This uh, story, uh, Apple TV Plus strikes an overall television deal with Tom Hanks's Playtone production company, a uh, Greg Hound uh, sequel is in development. Um, they did just strike a, a deal with Playtone, uh, which is head by um, uh, Tom Hanks and G- Gary Goldsman. Uh, under the exclusive deal, Playtone will make a new scripted and unscripted television series for Apple TV stream, streaming service. Uh, there is going to be a sequel to the to the Greyhound, the film Greyhound, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I thought that was a great movie, uh, and uh, because because uh, Tom Hanks had two great uh, strong movies that, that were on, it was including Greyhound and and Finch. Uh, which premiered mm-hmm. in 2020, 2020 and 21, uh, respectively. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that Hanks is going to star in the series, though, but it, it's his uh, his production company. But it just continues every week. We, he, we're seeing stories of just more and more content that Apple is jumping on, and, and I just don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. It's The, the services are here to stay, and they're just doing great. What do you think, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, the, yes, I, I agree with you. The deal with Tom Hanks and his production company. Yes, don't don't interpret that to mean that yeah. that Tom Hanks is starring in a TV show on Apple TV. Yeah. Um, 
his production company handles uh, production for a lot of different things. So, okay. but it's a great deal. And, uh, and I think it shows how strong Apple TV uh, plus is becoming yeah. on the Greyhound sequel. I, I don't want to do any spoilers because I am so not into spoilers, mm-hmm. but what I will say is with the way the movie ended, why would you do a sequel? Uh, that's true. But maybe there maybe a different storyline we're not aware of. I don't know. Yeah. And, and uh, as I recall, wasn't, wasn't the movie uh, loosely based on actual events? I believe it was. Yes. Yeah. So uh, anyhow, um, I'm sure it'll be a great movie, but at this point I'm questioning, how do you do a sequel for Greyhound? Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's it's kind of questionable. And besides, with 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 TV show you're just talking about Tom Hanks being in a, in a scripted series, he did bosom buddings. I think that was enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I didn't make the joke, but the joke was going to be, oh my god, we're getting a bosom buddies revival. A revival, right? Uh, what do you think, Andrew? I think this is this is some good news. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I do need to get more into TV plus I've been focusing more on Netflix for a while, but this entire week I've seen all these notifications go by (laughs) from the, um, TV plus, uh, press page. Yep. And, and, uh, all these updates. I think we're losing. We lost. Yeah, there, Andrew. <laughs> and he's downloading Andrew. content right he's now. Down, he must be downloading that yet. content. Yeah, it must be. Uh oh. <laughs> Do you hear me now? Yes, we hear you. Good. Uh, okay. Well, because of course you you get notifications anytime any of your favorite shows are on. But cards already dropped, so I gotta go. And Jeff and I both. Uh, I don't know if you watch. You don't know if you watch Andrew, but uh, I do. Yeah. yeah, we gotta watch, go watch that. But. But I don't know if I if if this cut me off at this point. But for TV Plus, I've seen all these this new this week, just all these new updates of the shows, new mm-hmm. shows announced. Mm-hmm. And like I wanted to say, Charlotte Henry would have had a field, not yeah. a field day, but just, a field week. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking of her when we when we've been talking about this, so that she'd have a a, a good debate about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. A couple other stories related to that. Uh, actually, this is uh, this is a podcast uh, that uh, Apple with their with their podcast content. Uh, Apple joins the true crime genre with Apple with TV Plus Run Bambi Run. It's an original podcast, and uh, watch out, uh, Poppy Parnell. Apple TV Plus has just debuted the first the, the first true crime podcast called Run Bambi Run. The show follows the real life story of Lori. Bambi Bamenek, a Milwaukee police officer who was dubiously convicted of a a murder before braving a daring escape as part of a year long quest to clear her name. And true, I mean, this is this is like the article says: these true crime podcasts are just a must for a lot of us, and there's so many of them out there now. Uh, one comes up notably is I know my wife really loves Crime Junkie. That is just a huge. Uh, uh, I've pop- heard them. Yeah, very very popular. Uh, so, mm-hmm. uh, it, interesting to see that Apple is, is getting into the, into the, uh, new episodic, uh, podcasts. And, um, I think this is great to see. It's great to see that they're, they're jumping in on this and, you know, podcasts are just, that's why we do this podcast. Cause we love doing it. And there's just so much content out there. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? Um, I, I think this is great because, it, you know, it's part of Apple's ongoing commitment. Um, but I question the uh, the assertion that this is Apple joining the true crime podcast uh, genre. They've already done one, and it was the the limited series that went along with the um, the TV show, the documentary series that they did. Oh, that's right. Uh, and I just totally forgot the name of it. Oh my god! Was that is that the phone call one where it's just audio? No, it's the one where uh, they do the whole interview with uh, with the the um, uh, it's like um, uh, it was the marine officer that was accused of uh, of killing a uh, uh, prisoner in custody, and um, 
uh, it was his uh, his own team that uh, oh wow that testified against him. I can't and I'm completely it. forgetting the name of it right now. And that's just killing me. You'd think I'd remember it because <laughs> because when uh, Charlotte had me on uh, her show, uh, I was on for the beginning. And uh, and then after the whole thing ended, I came back and we did a follow up episode. How can I not remember that? <laughs> He'll come to you. Uh, let's go ahead and go next story here. Uh, we talked about this earlier this week. Uh, Plex is going to end support for podcasts this coming Friday as we record this. It's tomorrow. Uh, Plex is set to end support for podcasts. Uh, the company. Behind the media management platform has announced its its web shows on the Plex Media server will also close this week, uh, and they said uh, most of this content uh, will be still available somewhere else on the platform. But they're just not going to be focusing their energy on podcasts or web shows anymore. So I'm kind of sad about it, but I, I I don't think a lot of podcasters got a lot of traffic from Plex when it came to podcasts. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? Um, as someone who's been in podcasting for a very long time, yeah. uh, the, the stats that I have seen for various shows having, uh, uh, or showing Plex, it's very, very low. Yeah. Like almost, I, it's not zero, but it's, but it's, a it's not much more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, I like the idea of podcasts being accessible from whatever platform you prefer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on the other hand, if they're putting resources into maintaining a right. a uh, feature that no one's actually using, it doesn't make sense as a company to, uh, to continue to support that. Why not put yeah. those resources right. into the other things that they're doing, like, like the new universal search feature? Right, right, which is great. Um, uh, I know Jeff, you have a Plex server. Do you mess, do you dabble in Plex at all, Andrew? Is it something you do? Um, I don't, I know what it is. I've tried it out very early, like years ago. I didn't really have a lot of media at the time, so I just passed it by, Mm -hmm. but I do agree if they didn't really see a whole lot of interaction with their podcasts because everyone is on Spotify, probably app, uh, Apple, um, Amazon, then it, I think it does make sense. I agree yeah. with Jeff, but yeah, go ahead. Andrew, it, it, if you have time, it's time for you to check out Plex again, because you, should. you really should, because I did the same thing you did years ago. <laughs> I set it up and I started messing around. I'm like, I just don't have enough stuff to, to put in here. And, uh, and now it's much more than just a uh, uh, media management tool because you can live stream all kinds of content through it. Oh. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, it, and they have the sharing features. So you can subscribe to your friends' uh, uh, libraries and you can uh, uh, stream content from your friends' libraries now. And, yep. uh, and now, especially after they just released that universal search feature, the thing that Apple TV wanted to, to, or the TV app wanted for Apple mm-hmm. TV, you search in one place and it searches across everything you can possibly imagine. That's actually what you can do in Plex now. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you have access to content through any of your services and you do a search, it's just like, yep, here it is. And as simple as that. But if you don't have access to the content, it'll tell you and it'll say, and here's the places you can get it. Yep. And That's I've got, cool. I've got a lifetime license for Plex, my Plex server. So it'll, I'll have it uh, until I leave this planet. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I still haven't gotten around to getting a, uh, a paid subscription oh, okay. yet. Okay. Yeah. So I don't have the lifetime thing, but I mean, I'm doing all of this stuff yeah. already. So one of these days, uh, I'll, I'll just buy it and I'll pay for it. Yeah. What the heck? Uh, yeah. So check that out. Uh, but uh, the, uh, so if we keep talking about some of the uh, stuff here, as far as uh, streaming here goes, uh, IMDB TV, which was always a very confusing service uh, uh, as it was anyway, what the, what its name was. Uh, I happen to watch it. I see, I oh, yeah, there's some shows on there that are pretty good. Uh, Amazon bought this uh, service a while back. Well, now it's going to be rebranded and called 
Amazon Freebie. <laughs> they want in on the streaming wars. This is in the verge. Uh, they, they, uh, uh, they did uh, launch another service called IMDB free dive back in 2019. And it quickly faded in the background as, mm-hmm. as on to ongoing streaming awards that the parent company, Amazon had already established with this respectable foothold in, but going forward, it's not going to be called Amazon freebie a name to emphasize that the ad supported platform is free to all viewers, which is great. I mean, and I think it's a lot, a lot of great things that they have on here. Um, you know, they've been showing things like, uh, uh, Bosch uh, legacy and the scripted adaptations of um, Tegan and Sarah's high school memoir. And there's so many other shows, even uh, judge Judy Shilin got in on the act and left it, left judge Judy after 25 years and put her show, her, her new version of her show on, on this, on this network. So, uh, so it seems like they're getting some, some activity with the, with this network and it, you know, sky's the limit to where, where it's going to go, I think. I just, was actually surprised. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, um, I don't like that name. IMDB is a more powerful name, I think, than this one. Mm-hmm. And I know I, I can understand the reason why they would want to put it under the Amazon brand, because we have Apple changing, you know, they're going from iTunes to Apple TV and uh, iBooks to Apple Books. But I don't know about this one. Uh, I, I think the name is lame, uh, but I'm <laughs> okay. surprised that they didn't just roll this in as uh, like the free version of Amazon Prime Video. Yeah, because they've yeah. already got the name of Co-branded. recognition, and uh, and giving people uh, a way to watch uh, uh, content with commercials instead of paying for a subscription to me would be a great uh, stepping stone to drawing even more people into prime subscriptions. And, yep. you know, and at this point, I think I I'm speculating, completely speculating the number of people that buy Amazon prime for the content, as opposed to the shipping, it's probably much higher now. Yeah. It's gotta be. I mean, there's that. I mean, that was always the reason why people had Amazon Prime at that first, like, oh, get free shipping. Eee. But that, mm-hmm. that that's so yeah. irrelevant these days that uh, uh, you want all the other stuff that you get. So um, yeah, for, I, I believe it or not, I still buy Amazon Prime first because of shipping, mm-hmm. and then I and then everything else that comes along with it's great. Yeah. But yeah, so now it's not free shipping; it's buy something and it shows up in two hours that or, too. or no later than tomorrow morning, you know, and, and that's definitely a prime feature. Yeah. Same day or or overnight. It's just, it's mm-hmm. stuff where they really have added a lot of that. So um, next story here, Netflix for Apple TV now uses the native TV OS 15 video player experiencing Netflix on your Apple TV is now more enjoyable and consistent with the Apple's guidelines as the app has now adopted the native video scrubber in TVOS 15. Um, and, uh, you know, Netflix, uh, now is going to play nice with your Siri remote. You'll actually be able to search for it. It's actually going to work in, in, uh, in the Apple TV app. And, and this is a, this is kind of a bit of a game changer. I think Netflix was always very resistant to allow this to happen, but I think they start to see that maybe this is a good thing to do. What do you think, Jeff? Well, I'm not as excited as you are about this, No, uh, but I like that they're doing this because it, it fixes some interface issues that Netflix has. As far as it being a game changer, okay, the game changer is when they let you do full Netflix searching through the TV app. It's, I mean, Netflix is still keeping itself so siloed on Apple TV. It's, uh, right. it's really annoying. No, I agree. Um, yeah, so- um, I, I do like Apple's default UI that they have for videos. I just like the... If, if all these apps plug into it, it's just a nice, consistent UI. Yeah. And you get muscle memory, I guess. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. You do. But, uh, I mean, it's it, it, it's all dependent on what people do. If it's, if you're using an Apple TV and using the Apple TV app, I mean, it's, it is kind of nice because 
I like going to to the menu on the Apple TV. I'm, you know, I'm going to go to Paramount Plus and go watch uh, Picard here soon. But you see all the other Same. choices. It's all right there. It's all right there. It's all right there and easy to to get to. You know, if something is on Netflix, it's going to pop up and give it give it. Uh, you readily be able to go in and check it out instead of having to go into the Netflix app and then start looking at what they're recommending and looking through all the stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think it's something smart. That, granted, I don't think the the audience is going to be that big is is as big with the Apple TV or with other platforms like Roku or the smart TV or or standalone apps or you know even watching it you know on the on your iPad you know it's 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 going to vary but uh but it's uh, good to see and, and then it's it's also seeing that the the Apple TV platform in itself I mean that the device as well as the platform is is getting stronger yeah mm-hmm. so, um then uh uh, so that is it for the news this week. Uh, let's go into some of the topics. Uh, last week, beta one of iOS 15.5 uh, was, uh, was released. So it's continuing this week. Nothing else is, uh, really changed since we talked about this last week, but, uh, I found this to be interesting. You know, I, I there's so many different rumors and stuff. I don't want to dab dive into all these rumors because it's like, like, like it is it's rumors and, it can. I don't want this to be a rumor show because it's always we're always talking about uh, f- uh, future releases. But we know inevitably iOS 16 is going to come out, and you know Mac OS is going to have a new version and Watch OS. But mm-hmm. I thought I would like to know. Uh, this this question was actually asked in, in a nine to five article, nine to five Mac article here. If uh, is this going to be the the final update before iOS 16? Because. Um, uh, a lot of the details that are in in 15.5 beta one are just basic updates and s- some changes where we've talked about um, in the past. But where wh- where is this going to go? I think do you do you guys think that uh, will Apple go anything beyond 15.5? I mean, I mean their track record kind of shows that they tend to this when it's at this time of the year when they're releasing another version of a, of a, of an update to the OS. It's a it's a dot one version as opposed to dot one dot one um i think uh you know this probably potentially could be uh, the final update before you know I, we, they announce ios 16 what do you think jeff i think that um there's a possibility a, a reasonable possibility mm-hmm. that we'll be at 15.5 point x uh, yeah. up until up until 16 officially comes out this fall uh, uh, I could see a 15.6 coming out if Apple is doing something with hardware releases between now and then where there are uh, new features on the devices where uh, they need to add some some new functionality to the operating system for those devices. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, and what do you think, Andrew? I, do you think that they're, they're going to come up with a new one? Um, based on if I, as far as I remember it, i it, I can see, uh, iOS 15 being announced at w, WWDC. Mm-hmm. And then maybe there will be maybe 0.1.2 after that. Probably after that, probably just point one, and then I think it'll be sixteen point zero. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Bob Beach, I saw, is in the chat there. How are you doing, Bob? Uh, he he asks what what is in fifteen dot five that's that's coming up. Uh, I think it was biggest thing was the uh, the face ID while wearing a mask. Well, that was fifteen dot four. That's fifteen four. Uh, what was? I, I, I don't remember what the what what the the other stuff is. I probably had to go back to the other old, old article here. Um, it was uh, there was there was some a couple things here. I'm sorry. Let me there, go. Yeah, and the horrible thing is, I honestly just drawing a blank on what they added in. Yeah, let me same. <laughs> it's it's like there's so many features now in our operating systems that it's hard to keep track of uh, of what we have versus what we're getting. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of a lot of updates here. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, be fumbling here. I'm just going to go look to see if, uh, if the the one of the articles uh, does. Uh, here it is. I, I, I couldn't uh, find this, but uh, I believe it wasn't a lot of uh, big big changes. Yeah, it's it's not like 
universal control is showing yeah. up because that that already happened. Right, because uh, they were saying that the universal control wasn't going to be available if you uh, go up to the beta for 15.5, you have to have, be on the Monterey 12.4 update to be using universal control on that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, they- so what I just remembered, um, I think the iTunes Pass and Apple Wallet is going to be renamed to Apple Account, I think. Yes, that was going to happen. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, oh, that's right. If only we, we had a tool that could help us research I, that quickly. I've got it. I finally found the article. Sorry, guys. Uh, this is a good review anyway. Um, the uh, There were some references to the Apple Classical because, they, of course, Apple did buy that classical music uh, uh, service that's going to be added into that. So they did see code in there talking about classical music. Uh, Apple Pay Cash was going to have an update uh, to the wallet app, uh, and request and send buttons will now be there to make it easier to get to it right from the the wallet app. Hmm. Uh, again, we talked about universal control. Uh, the uh, I guess there's going to be a sports kit update because of the, because of Apple adding the uh, the Friday night baseball program in there. Um, the uh, I guess the Apple Card is now going to be uh, be referred to the physical card for the Apple Card as the titanium card in the wallet app. And like you said, you you just talked about the iTunes Pass rebranding. Uh, that's going to be uh, they're rebranding that to the Apple Account Card. Uh, oh, and one of the features, because of course I looked up too. Um, one of the features that I'm actually really looking forward to, and I can't believe I forgot about it, is being able to see Wi-Fi signal strength. That's it for your HomePod connection. Totally forgot about that. Oh. Yeah. We did talk about that last week too. You go back to show 198. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take yeah. A look. Yep. We did talk about that, but uh, uh, thanks for asking Bob. And, and uh, it was, uh, but it's, it does have some, some updates here. So, uh, but, but that's great. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the, where it goes. I, 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 I we always, it's always fun to, to kind of try to figure out what Apple's going to do uh, with this mm-hmm. stuff. So um, next topic, uh, I know Jeff, you got pretty excited about this, and we 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 talked about this on Mac Voices uh, Live earlier this week. Uh, uh, iMovie for iOS and iPad OS was updated. It's all it's up to version three point here. Um, the biggest thing they added was uh, the fact that you have uh, storyboards and you have uh, Magic Movie uh, projects that can be added here. And uh, I I think it's uh it's also it's a pretty exciting thing. I, I haven't started playing with it yet. I don't know if you have yet, but. Uh, uh, Jeff, uh, but uh, it's uh, got a lot of great things, and I like the storyboards. I think it's going to be something that a lot of a lot of users are going to enjoy you know, making quick videos because that's the big thing right now. People are creating, uh, editing and creating quick little short video snippets. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, uh, of course, TikTok. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, have you have you had to, uh, been able to play with it all since it came out? I played with it just a little bit, and uh, and. I was playing with it from the perspective of I want to see what these features are and uh, what you can do with them versus I need to make some videos because uh, my video editor of choice is Luma Fusion and and I actually do all my video editing on an iPad Pro. Um and there's people out there right now where their their eyes are suddenly melting like how what? but seriously <laughs> it's actually really cool. Yeah. Um so these the new features i think this is fantastic and uh, mm-hmm. and it's clear to me apple sees where um where their uh iMovie product is being used and when i say where i mean what space it's being used in and what devices it's being used on because this is an ios update right and uh and the whole storyboard features and stuff that's not on iMovie on the mac no, it's not. Um, but, yeah, because we were we were debating that. It's like why why isn't it that they say anything about the, the iMovie for Mac? And they said nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this and the is, only update the Mac got was uh, was uh, compatibility to be able to import the uh, the movies made with uh, with the uh, storyboarding thing. Uh, but clearly, Apple sees iMovie as a tool that people are using to make uh, to make video content that's going out on their social media networks and, you know, in a few other places. So they created tools to make that easier. 
Yeah, absolutely. The uh, I, I like some of the storyboards. You have things like uh, DIY or cooking, a day in the life, uh, about me, uh, mm-hmm. celebration. So you got some really cool little storyboards. I mean, there's there's a, there's about uh, twelve of them here, or so I think, or fifteen of them if I count correctly. But um, yeah, and when you look at those, I mean, you can probably immediately think of a video you've watched on YouTube uh, fairly recently that fits in almost all those categories. Absolutely. It kind of, you think about it, the, the app that they came out with for iOS before, uh, before clips, the clips app, you know, mm-hmm. you'd you got to have a lot of fun with that, but uh, this is more professional. I think the clips was just more of a fun, you know, silly way to do a quickie movie. And you may want to, uh, you know, pop, upload it to social media or be a TikTok or, or, mm-hmm. or, or wherever uh, with that. But even when you go into each one of these storyboards, you got all kinds of different styles. You can add music and color and fonts. And so you got a lot more flexibility and not have to be a, a full out a video editor. I mean, we, we, we all here, are, we use a final cut pro. I can get much better with final cut pro and I've have it, but, um, uh, but they did do some updates to those, those pro apps too, to, to be more optimized, uh, with a uh, newer hardware. So, uh, but no, this is exciting. I mean, people kind of, yeah. I, I had thought people that, that were starting to abandon iMovie because, you know, everybody thinks, ah, it's just a, it's just a, it's a free version and it's, you know, it's not that great, but it really, even the Mac version, there's just so much that you can do with it for somebody. I mean, anytime I want to do any video editing and people are on a windows machine, think about what, what are you going to do? How are you going to edit movies on a, on a windows machine? Anything that's out there in windows is not good. <laughs> Let's face it. And and you always have iMovie to fall back on. But Apple's done that with all of their, their media type apps. You know, GarageBand works really well in iOS as well with audio. Mm-hmm. Um, and iMovie is great as well. So, I mean, it's great to see. I mean, it, and I went right to a, full, to a from a version two to version three. And uh, mm-hmm. a lot, lot of great uh, new things on here. So, uh, check it out. Um, the uh, next, uh, next, uh, Topic I want to talk a little bit about was uh, about uh, Tim Hook this past week. Um, he was a keynote speaker at the Global Summit Conference, and the topic of side uh, board uh, side loading apps is still a bit of a big debate. Uh, Apple uh, uh, Tim is, is is definitely defending the fact that Apple has the right to stop and be opposed to side loading. Uh, if everybody doesn't know, this is a big proposed Digital Markets Act where it, 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 would, it would require Apple to allow the side loading of apps um, on the iPhone. Uh, outside the app store. And of course the, the big battle with the uh, Apple and Epic was always, a, was, was another thing you could think of, you know, uh, Andrew with your, what your, uh, what your knowledge of security, what, what, I know you may have talked about this before, but I'd like to refresh everybody's memory here. What is your thoughts with side floating? Is, is it something that could, is really potentially be of a, of a security issue? I, I mean, I think it is. Um, yeah, there can definitely be some security aspects to this. Um, yeah, what I was saying earlier this week, I, I lean a little bit more towards siloing because mm. I think I, I'm in favor of just giving people a little more freedom when it comes to these platforms. Um, and Apple already has Gatekeeper, for example, on Mac. I'm sure they could bring that to iOS. Um, and, uh, I forgot what I was going to say next, but yeah, I'm, I think I'm in support of that. Okay. Jeff, what's your thoughts with side loading? Uh, I, I see it as a place where people are going to start really screwing up their iPhones. And, uh, and, and by that, I mean, people like us, I think we're in a, better position to be able to to determine whether or not uh, apps outside Apple's walled garden would be safe. But there are so many people that, I mean, they just don't know. And yep. they're not in a position to, to be able to like really get the information. Mm-hmm. I, you know, for, for us, we're talking about, we, we have years and years of experience dealing with this stuff and the average user doesn't. Right. So, uh, so that causes me some concern. Um, however, do we really need to babysit everyone? Um, yeah, you know, is that, is that, yeah. But, um, and I had another point 
Oh crap. It was probably the best point too. Um, oh, well, I remembered yes. my point. Okay. Go with your point. And, and then my point will probably pop in my head. I just think the argument that Apple is putting forth is kind of weird. I assume that, you know, because they call it sideloading on iOS when it comes to the Mac, it's just, you know, right. The normal way of just downloading your apps from the internet but I kind of think that if Apple could introduce these two platforms at the same time, I'm sure they would love to have Mac OS as locked in as iOS is now. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I remember what my point was. So clearly Andrew, we are tag team. You are tonight. tonight. This is great. Um, okay. So my, my other point ties into something that Jim Ray said on Mac voices live on Tuesday he was talking about uh, about the inherent security features that are built in to the iPhone, and uh, and and I and I wonder if uh, if what he was saying is like totally spot on because if Apple has created a system which they have where apps are basically sandboxed from each other, so if you sideload an app isn't it going to be contained the same way the other apps are that you're using? And it will be uh, uh, restricted from accessing the same things that apps in the app store mm -hmm. are, are getting at. Okay. Well. So yeah, security. I, I, uh, Andrew, I'm with you. It seems kind of weird that this is the, the hill Apple is choosing for this battle. Um but maybe from an optics standpoint, it's the right one for them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so if you want to go back and watch the actual uh, keynote that uh, Tim uh, spoke this past week, uh, as we record it, the uh, link is in the show notes, check that out. And uh, we'll give you some more insights on what silo loading. And you, you, you decide what is it? Uh, maybe it's something that you're not, uh, that's something you wouldn't want to be doing here. So, um, Next story, next topic I want to talk about a little bit was uh, Apple Care Plus. Um, I, I I found this article actually in Consumer Reports of all places, uh, but I thought this was a, a great um, a great uh, discussion in in the sense of is Apple Care Plus worth buying for your iPhone? You know, giving yes. the high, and I, I that's my first uh, my first answer too. But you know, as, as we read, as I'm sure you've all read, I've read Consumer Reports, and they 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 do spend a lot of time in detail and kind of debating whether it is or it isn't uh, going through some of these things. Uh, but uh, do you shell out 199 dollars for a Care, Apple Care Plus plan? Yes, I, I I every single iPhone I've ever purchased. Well, of course, I'm in the uh, the Apple Upgrade program. I don't have a choice. I have to buy it. So, uh, but. Um, for those of you who buy it outright, um, is it worth it? Did you, you bought it on yours, Andrew, I assume? Um, yes. Uh, the last couple of models was actually the first time, like, I bought the iPhone 12. Now I'm on the iPhone 13. And those are actually the first two models, I think, where I bought Apple Care Plus. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's it's just, it gives me peace of mind, Great. which I think is interesting because I think that's their entire marketing, advertising. Like they want to drill this into your mind. It gives you peace of mind. Why don't you give us more money? But like, I think that's also a good thing. Like right. if my iPhone gets stolen or damage i can just send it in and hopefully get it repaired or maybe replaced yeah i i have a two-prong test okay. for apple care and uh, uh prong number one is the product designed to be able to leave my desk prong number two does yes. it have a display yes and <laughs> when, and when you get yes on both of those the answer is you buy apple care that's it yeah no. And uh, Apple Care has paid for itself over and over for me. Me too. Uh, my 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 biggest Apple Care success story uh, relates to my previous MacBook Pro. So I, I got the first generation butterfly keyboard touch bar yeah. MacBook Pro when it came out, and mine was cursed, just straight up cursed. And it it went through I think five different keyboards maybe more like seriously, I, I was losing track of keyboards. 
Um, they replaced the logic board, uh, uh, I want to say three times. And it was, it was like the only thing that was still original on my, just on my computer. Uh, when I got to the end of Apple care, I'm pretty sure it was the bottom plate because that's where the yeah. serial numbers etched. And, uh, and, and, and I'm not exaggerating, like, seriously, I'm pretty sure that was the only original component left. And yeah. when I took it back in, I, I had like a month left on Apple care maybe. And I'm like, it's doing it. It's, you know, <laughs> the problems they're there. And, uh, and they looked at it and they're like, yeah, you're coming up on the end of your Apple care. And this computer has been an ongoing problem from the day you got it. And we're not comfortable. We're going to be able to make that stop with the end of your Apple care coming up. So let's just give you a brand new, uh, current model MacBook pro. Oh, wow. Sweet. And I'm like, yes, thank you. Contring. And <laughs> yeah. And now, while well, some people would look at that as I scored big time and they're thinking of the money and, and I just got a free upgrade. Yeah. I mean, yes, I did get a free upgrade on my computer in that sense, but I paid for that upgrade over the course of, of that Apple care window because I spent so much downtime mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, taking the computer in, having to switch over to a backup computer. Yes, I had to keep a backup Mac around uh, just so that I could work. Um, I I didn't come out ahead on that, but in the end, I got a, a computer that was newer, didn't have the problems, and has never been in for servicing of any kind under Apple Care. Nice. Yeah. No, it's it. It is nice. I mean, I've had. We all have stories. You know, I spilled water on my on my uh, MacBook Pro, and they basically pulled. And they didn't replace the whole thing, but they replaced basically every component that was inside the MacBook Pro. So, mm-hmm. but but it was covered a hundred percent, and they they gave me goodwill. But these days, now the 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 Care Plus plan, you know, and it's happened to it's happened to the best of us. You drop the you drop your iPhone, and it cracks the screen. Well, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you know, it's not cheap to, to replace a screen uh, because of the components uh, you have to you have to really get it fixed. So it's 199 dollars for the the Apple Care Plus plan on the on the 13. Uh, screen placement will only cost you 29 dollars as accidental damage. Um, for any other accidental damage, it's th- it's 99 dollars, and that, that that covers it. You know, uh, I think uh, I sold my my iPhone 12 Pro Max to my sister in law, and and I. Couldn't figure out why her camera wasn't working real well, but it turned out that she dropped it, and the back of the camera of the iPhone was cracked. Mm, so, so that will do it. Ninety nine dollars, and then they they fixed it. So, uh, so that in itself, especially someone if you if, if this was if you worry you're a little more prone for dropping. But there are people out there that are that way, but I think I think the the, the Apple Care Plus plan is well worth the investment. Uh, Absolutely. Consumer Reports, is, as and kind of summing up their their bottom line, they 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 go in and say there's really no right or wrong answer. I think we've we've debated here is there is I, a I, right answer. <laughs> I completely disagree with Consumer Reports yeah. on this one. There is there is a there is a right answer, and that is get it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and they also debate why is it so expensive to to fix an iPhone? Well, the components are getting more expensive. I mean, they're very intricate, and Apple has done a very good job of of trying to, to reinforce it. You know, they they advertise that you know it, it can it can handle dropping it in the mud and being able to be water resistant. But it's gotten a lot better over the years. Um, but you know, just like any other d- d- electronics device, you know, you've got that that slight uh, possibility that uh, it could. Uh, it it could be a problem. So, yeah, it's a supercomputer in your pocket. <laughs> it is. It is. It really is. So, um, so that's it. That's it about uh, Apple Care Plus here. Uh, and um, one other thing I kind of wanted to talk about here. I didn't know if we would get to this or not, but I, I I'm going out to f- future here a little bit. I thought this would be fun to, to talk about here a little bit. Uh, Nine to five Mac put together an article here again for iOS 16, which was still rumored that it's going to be out and in, in, in when it gets announced in June. But uh, there's so many stock apps out there with the iPhone. Uh, I'd like, like to hear what you guys, your guys' thoughts are. I know there's, there's, it's hard to put you on the spot here as far as what apps are out there. But what would you like to see Apple upgrade the most? Um, and I, and I, and then the first thing that they said in the article here, I think is, is I think is a. Uh, 
is a good one is, is messages. I think, yeah, messages is, mm-hmm. is great, but there's so much more to improve on that. Uh, I'll start with you, Jeff. What do you, what do you think? What, what do you think Apple could do better with messages uh, of what you, what you experience uh, with it now? Cause it's been the same for years, basically. Um, what I really like, and this is not going to happen. Yeah. I would like Apple to take messages and make it our universal messaging app. So you can plug in your credentials for WhatsApp and uh, mm-hmm. you know, and Signal or whatever else you're using, and you have a unified interface yeah. for all of your your chat tools. And you remember when we used to have apps that did that? I do. I I thought that that they did announce that wasn't it Message Kit or something? Um, uh, holy crap! Really? I don't remember that message kit. I just assumed that all these third party players like Facebook messenger didn't want to have all their messages going through Apple's platform Mm -hmm. or maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I don't know. What is message kit? I love Google Hmm. for this. We all, we all do. Um, that's definitely not it. Um, that's definitely not it. Man, why does everyone call their stuff the same thing? <laughs> Darn Google. Uh, message Kit is an open source community driven UI library for creating a messaging user interface. Mm-hmm. Huh. So, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, so this is. And it's also part of the input uh, layout uh, tools built into Swift. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the other, I mean, there's there a number of other apps that mentions here. I, I kind of agree with them with the camera app. I think the camera app's got some some places that to, that could that could has room for improvement. Uh, specifically trying to make it, like they say, a pro version to be able to understand, being able to take the full uh, mm-hmm. understanding of what the camera can do. I mean, there's so many third-party camera apps out there. I don't know if you use, do you use, the, do you use the standard camera app or do you use any of the third-party ones that are out there? I do both. Yeah, me like too. For, for my regular stuff, like just day-to-day, hey, I'm taking photos real quick. Yeah. It's the camera app. And, yeah. uh, and then... Uh, what am I using? The funny thing is I just tap on the icons and I don't pay attention. <laughs> we have so camera I, plus you've got filmic pro for video. Uh, there, oh yeah. I, I do have filmic. Yeah. There's, there's a number of third party apps, but what could, what should Apple do to, 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 to make the camera app even more of a, of they, a attractive app to be. What using? they need to do is expose all of these other controls that the camera has, right. but, not by default. What they need to do is have a uh, pro mode on the yeah, camera. Exactly. And so you go flip a toggle and, in settings, and uh, and then it exposes all of these other interface elements. And so yeah. most people will leave that turned off. But for those of us that want those features, then go into settings, go to camera, and turn on pro. Okay. So it's not even like in the regular interface in the camera app. You have to go somewhere to find it. So you don't have people accidentally turning it on. Right. What do you think, Andrew? Is it, do you think there's, can you, would you like to see any improvements in either one of the apps we just discussed? The messages and the, and the um, my idea was actually, I want to see improvements to Apple mail. Mail. Okay. Uh, yeah. The mail app, it's just, it's like, a, it feels like it's 10 years old. Yeah. And I specifically mentioned this because I recall maybe a couple of years ago, there was this rumor that Apple was planning improvements to mail. And it did sound like they were maybe trying to copy Google where they would have some AI, probably Siri, uh, automatically sort your emails into newsletters and travel and purchases and all that sort of thing. And I really hope that they do get to that. Okay. Yeah, see, this this is still a prime opportunity for one of the third-party email app developers to just 
jump way ahead of mail. And I use mail as my exclusive email app and not because I think it's the best, but it's the only one that actually does all the things that I want. Mm -hmm. And you, you get a subset of features across the different uh, email apps that are out there. But, you know, if you, if you want something where you can have your email aliases set up uh, and then you can also say, have digital signatures, on your messages. And I don't mean like, like, um, you know, this message was sent from my iPad, but like, you know, where, where it's the actual tokens. So you can do the verification that the, that this email has not been altered and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, like the full yeah. PGP sort of thing as well. And you can't do all of it in, oh, oh, and then all the plugins that add in all the extra functionality, mm-hmm. you can't do all of it except in mail. So I have to deal with what mail is to get all the other stuff that I want. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I hope, I, obviously this was just all speculation. It's our thoughts. What you want, we want to think, we want to see what Apple would come up with, but you know, Apple has been stalling for quite a few years for most of these apps we've talked about uh, on this topic. So um, let's hope, let's hope they can, we can see some more improvements uh, going on to the future here. So, it looks like we have uh, come to a close for the show this week. Uh, but before we wrap up, I wanted to talk about our buy, buy me a coffee contributors for this week. And uh, thanks for everybody who's supporting the show. We really appreciate it. This week's uh, supporter was uh, a listener, Bill. Thanks, Bill, for, for supporting the show this week. He bought a couple of cups of coffee for us this week. So we really appreciate oh, nice. uh, appreciate nice. uh, that. And I'll, 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 I'll drink a couple of those with for you as well, Bill. So thanks, thanks so much for listening. I'm glad you enjoy the show as well. Uh, but with that, let's go ahead and wrap up for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at InTouchWithIOS.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. Support the show, as I mentioned. Buy me a coffee at InTouchWithIOS.com slash coffee, just like what Bill did this past week. We would really appreciate it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you are uh, notified when we are live streaming, which is usually on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific, on our YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com slash DaveG65. You also go watch, watch and listen to past shows, as well as the live streams we've recorded, which we are this week. Uh, visit In Touch With iOS magazine on Flipboard, where most, if not all, the topics we discuss are flipped into that magazine, and you can go back and look at those uh, links. It's uh, all the links are in our show notes as well. You can subscribe to the show in your favorite podcatcher, including Pocket Cast. I'm going to keep highlighting Pocket Cast because I love Pocket Cast, but uh, also Apple Podcasts, which is most popular, of course. But uh, better yet, just go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Jeff Gamut, thanks as always for being here. Where can people find you? Uh, well, thanks for having me back. And, uh, and, and I know I said that uh, I, I was really happy to be here. And, uh, and it's true. I have so much fun. This, is, this is great. Um, okay. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, jgamut on both. YouTube.com slash jgamut for my videos. Most Tuesday evenings on Mac Voices Live. And uh, uh, Thursday, um, it would be right about lunchtime for me. Uh, on the big show and then Friday mornings on the Mac show. And then of course, uh, most Thursday evenings now here with you and also on context machine Same. with Brian Chaffin. Don't, and, uh, don't and that. seriously, <laughs> we finished recording this week's show uh, shortly before uh, I, I hopped in here. So I'm yeah. very excited about this week's show and, uh, okay, we'll and listen. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brian got his uh, studio display, just so you know. Oh, oh nice. I, you better go listen to that context machine. I want to hear about that because that, that's that's impressive. Uh, thanks for being here, Jeff. And Andrew Orr, I'm so glad you made it back to the show here. We've had you on a number of times and we'll have you on again. We love having you. And uh, thanks for being guest this week. Uh, where can people find you and your work? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, right now, you can find me on Twitter mostly at Andrew or not. And then, as I mentioned earlier this week on Mac Voices, you can also follow me on Apple Music under the same username where 
If you like, uh, you know, metal music, alternative music, <laughs> uh, check my profile out. I'll make sure we have that link in the show notes here as well. Uh, appreciate you being here. And I appreciate uh, all of you being here. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the show. We enjoy doing it. And we'll talk again soon. Bye.